guys and welcome to another vlog. I am at Natrax which is Asia's largest proving ground to drive Skoda cars on a high speed circuit as well as to do a handling test. The cars are of course the Kushak and the Slavia and I am going to top out the Slavia today and also give both cars the beans and since you guys are already here, I will show you a bit of top speed run on the Kodiak as well. Let's go. Let's start by doing a high speed run in the Kodiak first. Now what is the top speed this car can do? I believe easily above 200 km per hour but my aim is to hit the highest top speed ever on this track in this particular car. So let's go. Straight away we are going to be going for the top speed. This section I am completely flat on the floor in terms of acceleration and the car is pulling smoothly and nicely. Right now we are in 5th gear. Okay, I'll upshift to 6th taking manual control of things. 212. Oh my god, look at this. It is doing 218. Yes, we hit the top speed. It's not going to go any. No, 19. Will we hit 220? Oh yes, we did hit 220. And 221. <laughs> Let's top out this car in this new color on the high speed test track right away. What speed will we hit? 200 plus easily. All right, first things first, we are going to turn off the air conditioning and break down. We get it into drive mode or stop start system. Turn off the seat ventilation. Music is playing from somewhere. Weird. Music off as well. We get into sport here. And it's time to launch, which means left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Revving the motor doesn't rev. Yeah, this dual clutch automatic or any dual touch automatic for that matter doesn't let you launch, which is a bit of a bummer. 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 9.4 seconds, which is around 0.1 seconds faster then the Kushak <laughs> because the same engine 1.5 litre TSI Evo engine producing 150 horsepower and 250 Newton meters of torque engine feels really nice and punchy there's that initial lag but mid-range is strong and the top end is absolutely phenomenal the manual is of course better you say 1.7 lakhs this costs 2 point sorry 22.12 lakhs on road Mumbai yeah it is a bit on the expensive side but then it's a bigger engine which would have got the RS badging for sure it does feel stable at higher speeds, obviously it doesn't feel as stable as say the Rapid which was stiffer. This is softly sprung, ride quality is nice. Steering is actually quite good. It becomes very vocal because there's a lot of wind noise, there's a lot of tyre noise. Here we have upshifted to 6. It's a 7 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. Feels quite stable. The tyres are more comfort oriented here. So it could have done with better tyres, it could have done with lower ground clearance as well for the track of course. It could have actually slapped on the RS badge here by lowering it, giving it some distinct cosmetic features as well but as I see it doing 200 comfortably this is a Skoda car in the true sense performance is really very nice we have actually tested the top speed it's not going beyond 200 kilometers per hour I don't know why I thought it hit around 210 at least so we are in 7 gear which is the top gear manual one is so tall gear now first is 60 second is 100 third is 160 that's how crazy it is it does remain stable but the wind noise is too much otherwise if you're not in a windy terrain the problem with this car is that okay let's use the paddle shifters we downshift one gear oh my god i think the wind is just way too much and now we're going to slow down brakes are fine and decent but the problem is it does not get rear discs they can add that in the facelift i believe overall performance is good you've got paddle shifters as well it's showing an eco indicator and we have to end this drive very short drive Never mind. Look at this, okay? <laughs> I can feel a bit of the roll because there is some amount of body roll or maybe considerable amount of body roll in this car because of the soft suspension and the 179mm ground clearance as well. <laughs> Horn test ho gaya faltu ka, but wasn't needed anyways. Yeah. All right, let's go. Handbrake down into drive, into sport. Air conditioning off completely. So this is actually the handling test of this car. Now, of course, Slavia is a fantastic car in terms of handling. There's no two ways about it. In spite of the fact that the ground clearance is just way too much. Our uh, engine is quite loud. You know why the engine is loud? Not because the engine is loud. It is because there's no insulation in the engine bay. That's the reason why it sounds so loud. But it's actually quite sporty. Performance is very good here. Because this is a 1.5 litre TSI Evo engine. Which I've spoken so many times about. I don't need to repeat myself. But it's just fantastic in the way it delivers performance. You can see a little bit of understeer kicking in. These tyres are really not meant for driving like this. More comfort oriented tyres. Brakes are good. In spite of the fact that it does not get rear disc and steering is actually quite nice and accurate in fact it has got good amount of feel and feedback but could do with more feel for sure around the corners you can feel the roll but it's very well controlled somehow 
gearbox is very fast with shift so this is a 7 speed dsg box which is quite quick so there's this initial lag which you feel and because this is a dsg it just does not let you launch as well which is very disappointing i don't know why it does not let me launch but uh, that's with all dsg boxes they simply don't let you launch here yeah, we've hit 120 130 kilometers per hour so it does pick up pace quite quickly we're actually going to take manual control of the gearbox revs nicely around 6000 rpm it goes beyond 6000 rpm it has got a real nice top end as well so very grunty in the top end very punchy there it doesn't nose dive in spite of the fact that it has a soft suspension there's no nose dive as such under heavy braking so feels very composed in that regard as soon as i punch the throttle it does respond beautifully well in the mid-range so mid-range is fantastic in this car no complaints on that front you can just go right left little bit of body roll obviously you have to deal with that but no complaints otherwise this guy's engine now really punches it forward so fast now that any other car in the segment just does not even come close simply because the engine is so powerful i think it's much 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 faster than the city much more balanced than the city only thing is the ground clearance is just too much 179 mm for a sedan is like suv territory but then i have actually driven the virtuous over really bad roads and that's when i realized that trust me you need high amount of ground clearance on a road because once i took it in a ferry it almost touched because there is just no sense of how they make the road really like the way the steering has been calibrated now we are obviously in second gear so you can hear a lot of the engine engine is actually very smooth at lower speed you just cannot hear it that's the level of refinement it has to offer and i just wish that the tires were a lot grippier because they don't offer you the grip you want to have from such a car which is so performance oriented and rs version would be so amazing lowered with bigger wheels and better tires would be just fantastic but trust me i've driven this car so much that i really love it can be improved a bit but i'm sure skoda will do that with the facelift i think we should get into the kushak now to see the difference because that is more stiff this is more soft and the softness can be felt around the corners okay time to go in the kushak monte carlo sport mode straight away and off we go oh we are in the pit lane anyways feels very similar to the slavia same engine 1.5 150 horsepower 250 newton meters of torque but the beauty is that this is actually stiffer and heavier because of which it actually is 0.1 seconds slower from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour going in 9.5 seconds so i've had a lot of the slavia today because i actually drove it on the high speed track as well but this car is no different in the way it drives i think the steering is a bit loose i find the steering on the slavia to be much better somehow and obviously it feels top heavy but because it's stiffer it feels so much better around the corners it's actually the one liter engine now which is better around the corners because obviously it's more like lighter at the front because of the lighter engine but this engine is fantastic again the same loud noise coming from the engine because of no insulation in the engine bay but it sounds very smooth in the top end of the rev range and then body roll is there while well, it's well contained for an suv look at the way it maintains the line it's actually surprising the way this car drives very impressive huh so we are just going to manually take control of the gears right now going to downshift no no we can't downshift because we're hitting one see this is the difference I hit almost 138 kilometers per hour because this car all, all, obviously is inspiring me more to push hard because of the stiff suspension. They should have swapped the way the suspension has been tuned between both the cars because honestly this being soft would be better and the Slava being stiffer would be better without a doubt. Brakes are good again. The lack of rear discs is something which I don't understand why Skoda has not up there. You can hear a bit of the tire noise. I think the tires are not in the best of condition as such but when you're in the mid-range now this car performs beautifully well. The kind of uh, performance it has to offer, this engine is, trust me, unbelievably awesome. It also gets something on a cylinder deactivation technology. So when you drive it very sanely and smoothly, it will cut two of the cylinders to boost fuel efficiency. Something which is the need of the hour, considering everyone is shouting environment crisis, environment crisis. Understeer is obviously ample if you try to push it hard. That's the thing which happens with front wheel drive cars. But steering is such a surprise. Even the way, they, the way this car actually turns in, for a car of this size is hugely impressive do this with a creta or maybe a seltos and you'll realize how good this particular car is the kushak whether you drive the monte carlo or the regular one doesn't really make much of a difference in fact i really like the one liter engine as well because in spite of being pin size it really pushes way above its weight so near the red line it becomes really loud and boomy as well let's downshift and that's into first gear listen to it sound like crazy at almost 6000 rpm and i think that's a lap 
quite impressed by this car honestly it's not a track car but it can do track duty quite well gearbox is very fast which shifts only at slower speeds now it stutters a bit so in city driving it's not the best but overall very quick with shifts both the Kushak and Slavia have obviously got 5 star rating from Global NCAP and they have actually put a car on exhibit which is basically the body shell of the car. There's more interesting stuff because obviously the new color on the Slavia as well as the Kushak which actually comes from the Octavia and this is actually the Rapid which is actually made by students and I said actually so many times I want to slap myself. So this car is made a convertible so that kind of looks cool. In fact, if you notice one thing, you cannot shut the roof only. So it's permanent convertible here. Kind of nice and cool, but obviously this is not going to come to India anytime soon. Actually, it is in India. How can it not come to India? I mean, it's not going to be launched in India anytime soon or they launch an affordable convertible car. That would be super cool, wouldn't be? You know what? This logo, na, it actually goes down. Yeah, you can push it down, you can push it up. So there's this weird feature for the logo as well. So quickly look at the car from inside and outside. Guys, thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you like it, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.